Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are learning all about the engine used in the brand new Toyota Supra and Toyota actually did a great job with this engine. It has already won three Wards Auto Top 10 Engine Awards. It won in 2016 when it was used in the BMW 340i, it won in 2017 in the BMW M240i, and it won in 2019 with the BMW X5. So yes, if you have not figured out yet, BMW makes the engine for the new Toyota Supra and just about everything else. Now the engine is referred to as the B58 and there are of course many variations of this B58 so the latest information I have seen uh, is pointing to the engine in the Supra being the B58 B3001. So what does all of this mean? Well the B it means it was made by BMW, actually made by BMW. If this was a W it would mean that it was created by a third party. The 5 means that it's a 6 cylinder engine. If this number was a 3, it'd be a 3 cylinder. If it was a 4, it'd be a 4 cylinder. But because it's a 5, it's an inline 6 cylinder. Uh, the 8 means that it is gasoline powered, turbocharged, has valvetronic and direct injection. The second B also means that it uses gasoline but that the engine is mounted longitudinally. The 30 represents the liters of the engine, so it's an inline 6 cylinder, 3.0 liters. The O is its performance class, so BMW has a performance class scale from K all the way to S. There's six different classes and the O is the upper scale so you know not quite in the dead center but uh, there's six classes and O is considered upper, S being the top, K being the bottom and then one is the revision number so it is the first revision of it. I've also seen uh, some reports saying that this instead of this O1 in the Supra it is a C uh, but regardless I believe this is the engine used in the Z4. Now in the Z4 the engine's making 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. The Supra of course being based on the Z4 but with a different exterior and then the engine in the Supra is 335 horsepower so it is down on power versus the Z4 and a little bit on torque 365 pound feet uh, but it's also starting at $15,000 cheaper than the BMW Z4. And uh, the engine that won the Wards Auto 10 Best Award for 2019 used in the X5 is making 335 horsepower so same as the Supra but down on torque 330 pound feet. Uh, at 1500 rpm. So this does give us a clue. I do believe you know the Supra is going to have that turbo, uh, that full boost come on very early so I wouldn't be surprised if we were to see a very similar RPM number for where this torque is available but used in the X5 this engine is getting that peak torque uh, already at just 1500 RPM. Very cool. Now the B58 engine is the successor to BMW's N55 engine and so we're going to get into some of the changes here for this engine uh, versus the N55 and one of the things, one of the major changes to the block is they went from an open deck in the N55 to a closed deck on the B58. And so the main advantage of doing this is for rigidity. So BMW does this with their diesel engines uh, but now they are going to be doing it with their B58 engine uh, and, and it has that added strength, added durability, added rigidity of the block there. Of course you know the advantage of using this open deck design is that you have that coolant flow all around your cylinder bore. So you have to change up a little bit your coolant strategy using the closed deck but overall it is going to be a stronger engine that can handle higher pressures within it. So you can see just these smaller little coolant uh, bores versus an open deck is going to have you know that entire area around that cylinder is going to be available for that coolant to flow around it. And of course I've just drawn uh, two cylinders here. This is an inline six cylinder engine uh, with the twin scroll turbo. We'll get a little bit into that later on. Uh, but overall a stronger engine block design versus the previous N55. The B58 engine is also using an upgraded cylinder liner. So whereas previously they were using cast iron cylinder walls, uh, now they are using an electric arc wire spray and actually spraying on that cylinder liner. And it's very thin, so it means you can have a larger bore with the same size block. Uh, it weighs less. It's only just 0.3 millimeters uh, in thickness uh, versus you know the cast iron cylinder walls, which will be much thicker. Uh, has less wear, better heat dissipation, lower friction. Uh, BMW says the unfortunate thing with these is that they cannot be machined again. Uh, so they will last longer typically and they have less wear associated with them, lower friction, better lubrication properties, uh, but unlike a cast iron cylinder wall uh, where you could simply machine that again uh, if you were rebuilding the engine. The B58 is using both of BMW's valve technologies, Vanos and Valvetronic. So Vanos is valve timing and Valvetronic is valve lift and so variable valve timing as well as variable
double valve lift. And so here, just kind of looking at some different scenarios, uh, which BMW has stated how they're using this. At low RPM, here you can see the lift profile of the exhaust camshaft, and here's the lift profile of the intake camshaft. Of course, you have intake, compression, power, and exhaust, and then so you have your exhaust valve opening there, and then you're gonna move on to your intake phase. And so at low RPM, you don't really have much overlap between the intake valve pulling in that fresh new air and the exhaust valve pushing out that old air. And BMW says this helps improve torque at low RPM. Once you get into higher RPM and you have more exhaust scavenging and you're improving the flow through here, you'll inc increase the amount of overlap that you have between the two camshafts and that allows you to pull in a bit more air and make more power. So both of these are done for optimizing power. You'll make more power uh, by having less overlap at low RPM and you'll make more power by having more overlap at higher RPM. Another thing that you can do uh, with the valve timing is have internal EGR. So rather than having a separate circuit for the EGR, EGR to travel through, you can simply close that exhaust valve early, trap in some of those exhaust gases, depending on what you want to do for EGR, and that of course means reducing uh, combustion temperatures and thus improving the NOx emission properties. And of course, Valvetronic, I have a separate video explaining all about how Valvetronic works, uh, but the major update to this B58 engine is that they have reduced the height of the system so they can decrease the overall height of the engine by making this more compact, of course, allowing for a low center of gravity. In the Toyota Supra, one of the things they're claiming about it is it's extremely low center of gravity. Even though this is an inline engine, Toyota is claiming that the Toyota Supra will actually have a lower center of gravity than the Toyota 86, which is using that flat boxer engine. Another cool thing about this engine is its use of a twin scroll turbocharger, and this makes a lot of sense when paired with an inline six cylinder engine. And so what you're doing is you're separating the first three cylinders and the back three cylinders exhaust manifold as they travel to the turbocharger. So the turbocharger has two separate scrolls and each scroll has its individual exhaust manifold. Now I've stretched this out. In reality, it's gonna be much more compact, uh, but the reason why I've stretched it out is to help explain why it works and why this strategy makes sense. So if you have this inline six cylinder engine right here, cylinder one at the beginning, cylinder six at the back, you're firing order 153624. So here we're looking at the different exhaust pulses based on when these valves open. So if our cylinder one is our first, then we're gonna have that exhaust pulse up here. Next is five, then it's over here. Next is three down here, six up here. And as you see, two, four, it goes back and forth between these two exhaust manifolds. And that's why it's beneficial. You're separating those exhaust pulses and allowing time for the valve to close in between. And so if you were to think about this system, if you were to use a single turbocharger where you didn't have these split scrolls, then all of those exhaust pulses are going forced down into the same exhaust manifold. And so they're gonna start to overlap with them because since you have a six cylinder uh, and you're firing uh, six times for every two rotations of that crankshaft, that means every 120 degree rotation of the crankshaft, you have uh, a cylinder firing, which means you're going to have valves open at the same time. There's going to be two exhaust valves that are open simultaneously. So looking at this example here with a single scroll, if one were to fire first and then you have your exhaust stroke, that exhaust pulse is coming out from one, and then while it's traveling out, cylinder five is going to open. So this valve is open here at cylinder one, and this valve is open here at cylinder five. So now one is competing to force pressure against that exhaust pulse five that's coming out and also send pressure to the turbocharger. So rather than having these kind of conflict with one another, uh, you separate out those exhaust pulses, and as a result, you're able to maximize the amount of energy you can put in that turbocharger, maximize boost, minimize turbo lag, and you're doing this by ensuring that each exhaust manifold does not have two valves open at the same time with interfering exhaust pulses. And finally, this engine has a different charge air cooling system versus the N55, which used an air to air intercooler, and now they've switched over in the B58 to an air to water intercooler. So you'll notice the intercooler is right above the engine. So you're gonna have a separate heat exchanger up in front of the car, which is going to allow that coolant to circulate between it and the intercooler. 
and of course then you will have your air travel from the turbo compressor into the intake manifold where you've got that integrated uh, charge air intercooler and then pass into the cylinders and BMW says there's a good number of advantages for doing so they say that they have lowered the volume uh, between the compressor and the intake valve so that's the most kind of the most critical component here is that you're reducing the volume of air from here after it passes out of the compressor to here the intake valve so if you were to use an air to air intercooler that has to come up all the way to the front of the vehicle it has to travel through that air to air intercooler and then back and they're able to shorten the routing uh, it's actually shorter than the way that i've drawn it here uh, but they've significantly reduced the volume between that compressor and the intake valve uh, which helps minimize turbo lag and the improves the responsiveness of the turbo They've also stated that you get a more even temperature distribution across the valves by using this air to water intercooler. So not much variation between what cylinder six is getting, what cylinder one or three is getting as far as the air temperature going in. So more even, more uh, normal combustion. You don't have to worry about your air fuel ratios being different for each from differing temperatures. It also has a higher intake pressure. Of course, using that intercooler, reducing temps and you know increasing the density of that air before it passes into the cylinders. They say they've been able to use a smaller turbocharger, which improves response, and that they have been able to improve fuel economy uh, by decreasing the temperature of the air going in. That means combustion temperatures are low, and they can use a bit more advanced timing, create a bit more power, and operate more efficiently. So that is the new Toyota Supra. It is essentially BMW hardware with a Toyota body placed over top of it. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the new Toyota Supra in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching.